do the basic stuff for today. So linear programming is literally just, and this is used a lot of times in business and things like this. This has a lot of real world applications. It's usually used for maximizing a profit or minimizing a cost for a business or some situation of some kind. So we're going to do both maximizing and minimizing today. Um, but what it is, you're just going to graph a system of inequalities that are going to have this thing we call constraints. All right, so constraints, if it's got a situation with it, it's going to be some kind of rules that you have. We're going to do this more on the back. I'm just going to give you some straightforward constraints on the front to show you how to graph this. Feasible region is going to be the shaded area that's going to work for all your constraints. And then the last little definition I've got here is for an objective function. Okay, now the objective function, I'm just going to make a little note here. The objective function is going to be either to maximize something or minimize something. So it usually will give you like a P equals for profit or C equals for cost. But this is not on the graph. The objective function is not something that you actually put on the graph. We're going to plug points from the graph into it, but it's not going to be something you put into your system of constraints. Okay, so this one does not have a situation attached to it. I literally just have constraints here for you. And it says find the vertices of the feasible region. We'll do that in one second. And we want to maximize this objective function. All right, so our objective function just says n equals 100x plus 40y. So whenever you have a feasible region, we're going to graph this in a second, whatever values can maximize or minimize that objective function are going to occur at the vertices of the region. So a couple ways we can do this. If we want to use intercepts here for this very first one, it just says x plus y is less than or equal to 8 we would just have eights for both the x and y intercepts and we can play connect the dots. I'm going to do one thing here with you though, just real quick. If I were to get y alone there, I would just subtract x from both sides. And I'm actually going to put points on this only because we're going to try to find out where these different inequalities, where the boundary lines intersect each other. So it might be nicer if we actually have physical points to kind of make sure we're getting the intersections correct. Or you can solve the system if you're not sure, uh, but it might be easier to just jot the points down today. So that's what I'm going to do. But that would just have a slope of negative one. So, and you can see that the eights are connected. There's just down one over one, down one over one. Okay, we would shade below here. This is less than, but I'm just not, not going to shade for a second. All right, let me find a different color. All right, now for this one, if you want to do intercepts, if I did 2x plus y, my x-intercept would be at 5, right? Just 10 divided by 2. And my y-intercept would be at 10. If you wanted to think about this for plotting specific points, I would subtract 2x from both sides. And so it would be negative 2x plus 10. So if you wanted to do it with the slope, we'd go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1. Really, the only reason I'm doing this is because when I shade this here in a second, and you guys will see what I'm talking about, I need the vertices of what we call the feasible region. Okay, now, these two guys right here, x is greater than or equal to 0, y is greater than or equal to 0. One would be on the x-axis, one would be the y-axis. Anytime you see these constraints, and you'll see these in a lot of the questions. This set of constraints just leaves you in the first quadrant. If you ever see that, and those are in almost all the word problems because we'll have a situation attached to it, but it just says x has to be a positive number or zero, y has to be a positive number or zero. That's just going to keep you in the first quadrant. So the way I have that graph set up, you can't really screw this one up. So. My feasible region, I'm going to be less than both of those lovely lines there. So we're going to be here. And in the first quadrant, those other two. So this is what we would call our feasible region. Now, 
whenever you do linear programming, if you're going to maximize or minimize your objective function, that's what we're going to do here, you're going to find the vertices, it's a little quadrilateral, right? We're just going to find each vertex of this lovely feasible region, which is why I had you guys actually do the points. So right here, that is the point, let's see, 2, 6. And then I'm just doing the corners of the feasible region, right? Just the vertices. So 0, 0. Um, we have 5, 0. And then we have 0, 8. So there's four quarters here for that feasible region. Now, if you have a maximum or minimum, it has to occur at one of those points. So I'm just going to jot these down to the side here real quick. It doesn't matter what order you put them in or anything like that. And what you want to do is actually plug those values into the objective function, which I conveniently have moved off the screen here, so I'm going to pull this back down. Actually, you know what, I'm just going to rewrite it here. So it said n equals 100x plus 40y. That was our objective function, and it said we wanted to maximize this. So we want to plug these points in for x and y and see which one gives us the biggest number, and that will maximize the function. So, for example, for this one, and you guys can grab a calculator if you want to, um, this would be 100 times your x-coordinate plus 40 times your y-coordinate, and you'll just figure out what that is. This one is just going to be 320 if I do that. If I plug in 2, 6, I'm going to have 100 times 2 plus 40 times 6. So what's that going to be? That's going to be oh, 200 plus 40 times 6. I'm going to give us 440 here. All right, and we're just looking for the biggest number. Now, on some of these, you can just kind of, I mean, you can think about it for a second. If I'm trying to maximize and I'm plugging in 0, 0, that's not going to give me a maximum here. So you don't always have to test all the points, but for this example, that origin is just going to actually give you 0. So that's actually definitely not going to maximize the function there. So think about that. You might not have to plug all these in. Um, I'm just going to do it for this question so you guys can see. And then the last one, we would do 100 times our x-coordinate plus 40 times our y-coordinate. Now, this would just be 100 times 5 plus 0, so this is going to be 500. So, we're looking for whichever one maximizes the objective function, just gives us the biggest number. Out of all of those, 500 was the biggest number, so that point would maximize our objective function. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to have you guys try one more that's just with the constraints are already set up for you. This one's just a little bit different. And for this one, we are going to minimize the objective function. And then on the back, we'll actually do this with a situation so you can see how this works with an actual problem. All right. So basically, that first inequality is just saying x is greater than or equal to 2, but at the same time less than or equal to 6. So between 2 and 6. So I'm just going to do a nice vertexal line at 2 and a nice vertexal line at 6. Now, at the moment, in terms of my shading, it would just be between those two uh, vertical lines, but I'm going to leave that go for a second and just do the shading at the end. The next inequality says y values between 3 and 7. So for a horizontal line, I'm going to make one at 3, and I'm going to make one at 7. So right now I'd be basically in this little rectangle right in here if I was doing my shading. And I have one more constraint. x plus y is less than or equal to 11. All right, so... For this one, again, I, my, I know my intercepts are going to be positive 11 and negative 11. They're just standard form. If you want to actually go through and make sure we get the right exact coordinates here, I would subtract x from both sides of that to get y by itself. So the slope of that line would just be negative 1. So if you want to just go down 1 over 1, and really the only reason this is important is because I need to see the exact points that this would cross the other constraints we've got graphed there. 
All right. And we're less than that diagonal line I just drew in there. So my feasible region is going to be in here. And I need the vertices of this feasible region. Those are the only possible points that can maximize or minimize your objective function. Now this one, if you look at it, how many vertices do you guys see there? There's five. Yeah, there's a little, there's a couple more. So it depends on the question. You might have more than four. A lot of them have four, but it can have more than that. All right, so um, just the corner of each of the points where you guys shaded. All right, so let's see. Looks like I have the point two, two right here. This guy looks like two, seven up here. And you don't have to label it on the graph. I'm just kind of making sure I do this. Um, I've got four, seven. We've got six, five, and six, three. I hope I'm still on the screen, yes. Okay, now our objective function here, which is right up here, you can still see it on the screen. It says C equals 25X minus 10Y. And we want to, in this question, it says minimize. So I'm gonna plug these points in, the one that gives me, the, oh, did I screw something up? Oh, for sure, you're right, you're right, sorry, two, three. Okay, now, when we plug in, that looks terrible, I'll fix it in a second. Um, when we plug this in, we want to see which one of these gives us the smallest number. So the last one said maximize, so you plug it in, which one's the biggest, this one, plug it in, which one's the smallest. Okay, so, I'm just going to do it for each one here. So we'd have, this would be 25 times 2 minus 10 times 3. So that would end up giving us, what, 50 minus 30, so 20. We'd have 25 times 2 minus 10 times 7. So that's going to be, that's actually going to be negative. And you could get a negative. That's possible here. 25 times 4 minus 10 times 7. So that's going to give us 30. 25 times 6 minus 10 times, whoops, 10 times 5. I'm just plugging in the x coordinate for x and the y coordinate for y. This one's going to be 100. And this one, 25 times 6 minus 10 times 3. This is going to be, let's see, 120. All right, now. Again, you don't have to do every single point. If you can kind of look at the objective function and figure it out, just kind of in your head, like, okay, this one couldn't possibly give me a smaller number than this one. If you want to just plug in points that you think are the most likely to give you the minimum, do that. In this particular case, this one would be the one that minimizes the objective function, the 2, 7. That would be the vertex that is going to give us the lowest amount. Is anybody having a question? Okay, now, really most of the problems that we're going to see like this are like what we have on the back, where it actually is a situation, and we have to set up the constraints and then either maximize or minimize. This one, I think, is going to be, yes, we're going to maximize profit. So usually when you do a problem like this, it's like maximize profit or minimize cost. That's usually what it's used for. So we're going to have to set up our objective function here and our constraints. So it says furniture manufacturer can make between 30 and 60 tables a day, between 40 and 100 chairs a day, and the manufacturer can make at most 120 total units, so tables and chairs together. The profit on the table is $150. The profit on the chair is $65. How many tables and chairs are we going to make to maximize profit? And then what would that maximum profit be? Okay, so first thing I'm going to have us do is write an objective function. So our objective is going to be to maximize the profit. 
And I just said, let's, just so we all have the same graph, let X be the tables and Y be the chairs. We could switch that up if it didn't tell us. Our graphs would look a little bit different, but we'd have the same vertices in terms of uh, what we would test in our objective function. So just so we have the, all, all have the same thing, X is going to be tables, Y is going to be chairs. Okay, so most of the time, if you're doing a profit, we'll just do the objective function, just do P for profit. So profit equals. How would I write what I want to maximize here from that information? Perfect. Okay. So 150 for every table, 65 for every chair. Now, remember, that does not go anywhere on the graph, right? This is what we're going to plug our vertices into. All right. So what we want to write underneath here are the constraints that we want to use. So I'm just going to back up here and make sure we cover all this. Okay, I can make between 30 and 60 tables, between 40 and 100 chairs, so those are going to be two separate constraints at least, and then at most 120 total units, so tables and chairs together. Okay, I'm going to scooch this up so I can have some space, but you guys can see the problem on your paper. Can anybody tell me just any constraint that you could write based on what they've got in the problem there. Eli, you know, what do you think? Perfect. Okay. X plus Y less than or equal to 120 because they said we can only make 120 units total. So X is your number of tables, Y is your number of chairs. We have to be less than 120. Hey, Evelyn, tell you what, let's just put this on the graph right now. Um, so I'm going to do, the intercepts there would just be 120 and 120. Now, my graph, let's see, goes by fives, right? If I were, oh, hang on, let me make this so you guys can actually see the graph. I made the graph too big, I think. All right, so this one, if I solve this for y, would subtract x. The slope would be negative 1, right? Because my graph goes by fives on the x and 5 on the y's, I can just go down 1 over 1. It would really be going down 5 over 5, but that would reduce to negative 1. Just so I can go through here real quick, make sure I have the exact point. So this would be a perfect diagonal line, down 1 over 1. And I'm only doing this just to see if our vertices are nice points. So that would be all the way down there. Okay, now I'm going to say this, this isn't really written in the problem, but I'm going to say this real quick just for a constraint. Um, I'm going to say x has to be greater than or equal to zero and y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Just in general, we can't make a negative number of tables or a negative number of chairs, so that's just going to keep us in the first quadrant. So I'm going to just add that in. What other constraints are we going to have? Perfect. Okay. So it says the tables have to be between 30 and 60. So if you all want to write it, compound inequality, you could do it like that, between 30 and 60. If you want to write it as separate inequalities, we could do um, x is greater than or equal to 30, x is less than or equal to 60. If you want to do them as two separate, that's totally fine too. Let me make this bigger so we can read it. So either way, if you want to put them together or write them separate. So let me just make a vertical line at 30. Can't draw a vertical line. And I'm going to do another one at 60. Okay, and then I should have one other set of constraints here. What else would I write down? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. The only thing I'm going to, we're just going to put a Y. That's literally it. Okay, so if you want to just put them together like that, it said we could make between 40 and 100 chairs. You can write it as a compound inequality. Um, or you can kind of, if you want to do it like Y greater than or equal to 40, Y less than or equal to 100, if you want to write them as two separate, I would take either one of those on it like a test or quiz. All right, so I'm going to do a horizontal line at 40. And another four horizontal line at a hundred. Okay, now if 
I am looking at this lovely graph, I have to be between these two vertical lines, between these two horizontal lines, and I also have to be underneath this diagonal line that on my paper is in pink. So if you guys are looking at that, that shaded region should be here. And you guys can actually see that one constraint up there where we said um, y could be up to 100. We're not even going to get to that. All right, so that's actually not even involved in this. So we're not going to be able to make 100 chairs in a day based on all the other constraints that we have in this problem. So just keep that in mind. They might not all kind of connect up with the feasible region. That's okay. So we just need to check out what our vertices are. And these should all be on nice numbers. So this guy here is 3090. This guy here is, looks like 6060. This guy here is 6040. And this guy here is 3040. All right, so we got four vertices there. We want to maximize our objective function because we want to make the most profit we possibly can. Now, you guys can probably look at this graph and maybe kind of figure out which one might give you the biggest profit. I'm going to, sorry, I made this graph way too big. We're going to test these points in our objective function. So our objective function, the profit is 150 <coughs> for every table plus 65 for every chair. Tables were X, chairs were Y. So these are the points we're going to check out. So I've got 3090 from the graph. I've got 3040 from the graph. I've got 6060. And I've got 6040. All right, let me blow that back up a little bit so we can write. Now, if you look at that, you might be able to kind of think like, Okay, which one's going to give me the maximum, right? These are both added together. If I was being honest with you, I wouldn't check all these points. All right, I would check for sure this one. Now, the one, the 3040, there's far fewer chairs being made in that point than in this point. So this one has to be bigger than this one. So I wouldn't even check that one. And I would check this one. This is 60, 60. This is 6040. You're making fewer chairs there, so I wouldn't even check that one. You can check all four. I'm just trying to save you some time. So if I put that in my profit function, this would be 150 times 30 plus 65 times 90. I would check that one. 150 times 60, 65 times 60. This point has to be smaller than this. This point has to be smaller than this. So these are the only two I would check, and we're just going to see which one's going to give us the most profit. Let's see. Let's grab my calculator here. This one, and this will actually tell you what the profit is. So this one would be 10350 And the other one, I'm going to do 150 times 60 plus 65 times 60. This one gives you 12,900. The other two vertices I have there have to be smaller than the two I just checked. And so the one that gave me the largest possible profit of all of them was this. So we should make 60 tables and 60 chairs to fit all the constraints that we had and to maximize our profit. And our profit would be 12,900 there. Is anybody having a question? 